Thanks for tuning in to the Nindy Nation podcast, a weekly show dedicated to games for the Nintendo Switch, brought to you by independent developers. I'm Jeff, and soon to be rumored on an upcoming Nintendo Direct is Josh. This is news to me, Jeff. How are you? I'm doing great, Josh. And we're here to walk you all through the growing catalog of fantastic indie titles from the games and developers you know and love, all the way to the hidden gems inside Nintendo's digital gaming paradise. We'll discuss what we're playing, what we think you should be playing, and in our second half, we'll give you the full rundown of this week's new releases and the sales that you can't afford to miss. And thank you, everybody, for checking out our live, quote-unquote, live podcast last week. That was a lot of fun to record. Did you have fun, Josh? Oh, yes. Nothing better than being face-to-face, right up in each other's face, you know? Yes, I I agree. (laughs) So, uh, what has been keeping your Joy-Cons synced this week? Nothing. I I just That idea of me being the head of Nintendo and being on actually you know, introducing the Nindies. I like that idea. So maybe I should put in my application there. And, can I, can I, know. can I, can I have a sidebar 30 seconds into the episode? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there's, there's a slew, um, on both Nintendo's UK channel and their U S channel of kid focused YouTube shorts, like, like hand puppets with all of the core Nintendo characters. There's a amazing. like tonight show style, a talk show with a guy named Andrew and a puppet piranha plant. And it's called the play Nintendo show. These things are all awesome. Like they're totally geared towards kids like five to 10 years old. Um, yeah. I, I'll, I'll send you the links or I'll post them on YouTube. I've downloaded a bunch of them, put them on a USB drive and put them in the minivan um, for my daughter to watch. And she has legit learned about a ton of stuff about Nintendo history. Like she'll be like, did you know there are 88 levels in new super Mario brothers too? Cause you know, it's brainwashing her like a commercial, but that's Nintendo's goal. Reggie, Reggie fils is a character in one of the sketches, like a recurring character. Wow. And he's a, and he's a paper doll cutout similar to like, how Canadians are represented in South Park <laughs> and they call him the Reginator. And the, the, Reginator. Other day, <laughs> the other day, Charlotte came up to me. and was like, daddy, do you know who the Reginator is? <laughs> and I was like, I only know one Reggie. I'm like my body is ready. <laughs> yeah. And so anyways, my five-year-old daughter knows who Reggie is and, and, uh, and anyways, I'll I'll tweet about the uh, about those channels Reggie, to check out because they're super. He's cool. sort of like Shuhei Yoshida for Sony. I mean, he's just so ubiquitous with everything Nintendo's doing that you just got to know the man. Like, yeah, for sure. But anyway, what I've been playing. Let's start off with and remember, I maybe have been two weeks ago when we talked about this game that was coming out. Very strange, and you were very intrigued by it. Yeah. It's called The Missing yeah. J.J. Macfield and the Island of Memories. And yes, that's the game's full title. It was getting decent reviews. Yeah. And I actually picked it up because I was just as um, intrigued as you. And this is from developer Wide Owl Studios, by the way. And it's actually by the creator of Deadly Premonition. And I did never knew that. Oh, so the weirdness goes with the territory. Right, Hidetaka Suhiro, or as he goes by, Sweary, for some reason. Uh-huh. But yes, I was intrigued, so I picked it up, and it actually is a very, very good game. Like, I was... Wow. Yeah, as a platformer, you wouldn't think. It, it's a little floaty with the controls, I feel. But the main mechanic is that, as you <laughs> described few weeks ago is that you actually can dismember yourself and that's how you solve most of the puzzles in the game so there's it's very gruesome um (laughs) it isn't really blood that flies out it's more like this black stuff because she like loses her soul or something every time she cuts off a limb or some or something like that as one would yeah exactly but i'd like to compare it's sort of like um limbo or inside or something like that it's just it's got it's like that has this dark tone to it and it delves into some deep matters like suicide and i mean there's some pretty explicit material so definitely one the kids shouldn't Hmm. play but 
it was very interesting. Like I said, you solve puzzles, you can dismember your arms or legs. You don't really know until you dive into a chainsaw <laughs> or there's the puzzle. Yeah. And then you use you, you use your actual limbs. You can throw them to actually open doors or maybe you need to get through somewhere small. So you cut off both your legs and then you can roll through somewhere or like uh, one puzzle instance that I thought was pretty smart was you can actually get hit by like a wrecking ball and it like <laughs> her head like swivels off sort of but it's still there and it changes the gravity of the stage so you're on like the ceiling instead of on the on the floor so i thought that was pretty cool that's bizarre. it's it is very it bizarre neat. It, it's something you almost just have to play like i don't know if i would really recommend it but if you could get it on sale i think it'd be worth yeah. like checking out because like i said you can make her electrocute her and then you can do certain things from that or being burnt to death putting yourself on mm. fire to solve some puzzles and now is yeah. there is there a story element maybe it's spoilery so feel free to say so about like yeah like i she... said well you're you're actually with a partner of yours another woman and okay. she goes missing right. and then your whole goal is you're what well, well, you're on um you're on an island in Maine somewhere. I forget what I think it's a um, Memorial Island or something like that. And your whole goal is to find her. But as you go through, it goes back through her memories. And like I said, it delves into suicide and some dark themes like being not huh. being accepted and stuff. So it gets pretty it gets pretty uh, heavy, pretty heavy. But it yeah. also like I said, it's also lighthearted because, I mean, you're. <laughs> dismembering you yeah you're chopping up. yourself up and <laughs> solving puzzles by giving yourself headaches and stuff so it's yeah <laughs> right, right. And then there's this weird there's some weird imagery in it like there's this doctor with like a moose head that comes in like does some oh, weird stuff freaks me rituals out. with you and that's how you sort of gain your powers so um yeah, like when I look, when I think of dark imagery, like Darkest Dungeon is about as far as I go. Like that game can get like a little unsettling to watch. <laughs> yeah. So I'm a big baby. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe I wouldn't like some of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like when it was so popular for people to do YouTube sketches of like that horse head, that like fake horse head, that thing. That was really freaky. Out. Well, they, they had some good <laughs> cinematography that went with that, like just making it really like disturbing <laughs> so, right 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 but yeah uh, like i said it's i recommend it but maybe at a sale cost you know because just because it's so sure. unique that if you don't like it you're not gonna like it <laughs> so and then next i've been playing yamawari the long night collection and this is actually a pack of two games um the first is the uh, let's see, Midnight Shadows. That was the second game, but then the first game was Night Alone, and they're based off like this anime, like manga style. It has a chibi art style in the video in this video game, but it's another one that's pretty dark as well. So it's not something you don't want to play at night because th there's some disturbing imagery with some of the ghosts and spirits you <laughs> meet. And this is this is yeah, another I'm one that's trying to look it up. And the first thing I see is it's asking me for what, when I was born. Yeah, that's never a good sign. But then also like you're so this it's the same premise as like the you're searching for, you know, a friend of yours that goes missing. And as you're going around, you it's these dark environments in the this rural Japanese town. And you, all you have is a flashlight. And so you can't really fight off anything that's coming towards you. You have to hide a lot and i thought it was pretty neat how it melded the story with the gameplay and just how you know you had to try to survive on your own just with a flashlight and there's some light puzzle elements too that you have to get through but um yeah another one that you probably shouldn't play by yourself but hey it's pretty fun i mean i'm looking oh my god never mind holy <laughs> Are, are, are you seeing what trailer. I'm thinking you're seeing? Dude. Yeah. Dude, this is freaky. It's it, cause Gee, I was it's funny because it looks half cute. Of the trailer. Yeah, it looks cute at first. Yeah, I was like, this isn't that. Uh... And then someone like hangs themselves in the first like half hour that you're playing. Yeah. <laughs> it gets into some pretty 
messed up stuff. Yeah, no kidding. Ooh, I'm getting cold chills watching <laughs> some of these trailers. This is perfect. Right, this is perfect for like our thing. Halloween episode, I guess. Maybe that's yeah. That's maybe not, I'm prepared not well a bad for it. Idea. <laughs> maybe we should. Maybe we should do some some of the best uh, scary games, and I'll just sit here and be like, you know, I like games with cats. And <laughs> <laughs> get back to your cat quest. Um, finally, and this is more of a lighthearted one. It's called Zarvot. And this is actually a really cool game. It's the one with the cubes. You play as a cube. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and they had it at a, a Nindy Direct. They sort of highlighted it. But it has like a deep story of, and it's just a shooter like on the isometric plane, but you move around in this 3D world and you shoot, you know, you can charge your shot or you can just fire bolts at things and you break. There's everything is destructible. So there, there's it's got like that hyper realistic art style. Yeah, it's like hyper realistic, but at the same time, it's not, which is really sort of cool. And then um, it's just a lot of fun. You know, it has, like I said, it has a deep story and I'm having a I'm not too far in it. But yeah, maybe I'll, I can shed some more light on it next week, but I'm really enjoying it. It's a surprise for sure. That's really cool. Yeah. Well, I, uh, I've been playing uh, a few things this week, uh, but just this morning, um, I was reached out to by uh, a marketer that is working with Ground Shatter, who is uh, the developer behind the game Skyscrapers. And uh, this game is, comes out in a week. And I, uh, I don't know, I think about it. Can I talk about it yet? That's a good question. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't I, I wasn't I wasn't told I couldn't and I specifically said on Twitter, "Hey, I, I'm recording the podcast tonight." And she didn't she didn't say I couldn't. So, um anyways, uh so Skyscrapers is well, you know what? It came out uh, like a year and a half ago on PS4 and Switch oh, and uh Steam. I didn't know so, that. everybody oh. knows what it is. Yeah. So it is it reminds me a lot of uh kind of like Nidhog but it's vertical and it looks kind of like a art style is kind of like battle chef brigade or some of those adult swim, um, uh, games that are out there. So it's like that. It's a, it's a cool art style. Um, it's a very simplistic game where the, the whole notion is that two, three or four players are jumping up a falling skyscraper. So it's like a constantly vertically scrolling, um, level and there are platforms. When you stand on the platforms, they rotate. And as you jump off the end, the higher the angle, the higher you bounce off of it. And your goal is to either, uh, you know, KO the enemies or get to the top of the tower. So it's one of those multiplayer games where there's multiple ways to win, which is always fun. Yeah. And uh, so it's very simple. You can jump and attack and, you know, any combination of that jump and then you attack before you hit the ground. It makes a shockwave in the ground. And, um, you know, you can hit things that are falling from the sky um, out of the building and, you know, those ricochet around and hit your enemies or the other opponents. And then the uh, the arcade mode, as it were, is is just kind of poking fun at like the, the stupid ways that street fighter two characters would taunt each other in between battles and stuff like that. And, uh, the first, first round I played, I was, you know, it was so, so second round was pretty fun. And the third round they threw in three characters instead of just one-on-one and it got pretty hectic. And so I kept playing it for, you know, probably like a half hour or so. And, uh, my takeaway is that, uh, this is one that we should play for extra life and have some fun in a multiplayer setting. Um, sure. In, in the same vein that you would have Nidhogg or Towerfall or, you know, games like that around, um, I need to play it more to find out if it's that good. Yeah, uh, Nidhogg is was fantastic. Fun. But yeah, I mean, you're yeah. hitting all the right notes. I mean, it's something it sounds like a game you only play with it's more fun if the more people you have playing it or, For sure. you know, For sure. probably not a deep experience, but, you know, something you get out with friends occasionally, you know. Yep. Yep, totally agree. Yeah, so um, you know, we'll try to play that here uh, a little bit more when we can get together again and uh, and show it to you uh, that way. So awesome. good stuff so far. I'm gonna play it some more. Uh, like I said, I don't know if it has online multiplayer. I forget, 
but uh, I will report back. Um, wanted to also touch on, uh, I've been playing a little more Hyperlight Drifter. I've been talking about that a bunch, I know. Nothing really new to report back, but like we were talking about before we started recording, really cool that you can take time off from that game. And since the basic premise is simple and it's all about finding hidden paths and kind of retracing your footsteps. Um, there's always something new. Like every single time I play it, I'm like, how did I not see this last time? And I don't know if like new things are popping up or if I just legitimately missed it or what, but you know, it's cool. And, and honestly I booted it back up because I was feeling the soundtrack. I was just like sitting around playing another game and I was like, I want to listen to that soundtrack. You know what? I should play that game. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. I love that. You can just keep coming back back to it and like just dabble in it but still have like a complete experience yeah. that's not many games can say that yeah yeah absolutely um and i i need to i and i know guys i get it i've been talking about the messenger a lot <laughs> i know i'm sorry when we last recorded i was mentioning that i had just gotten to the very beginning of the 16 bit part of the game okay to that point, I had put about two and a half hours into the game, and that was on like a Wednesday night, okay? By Saturday, I had put 19 hours into the game. Tom, dang. And it is one of my favorite games that I have played in years, and I don't know why they front-loaded it with a game that is not the rest of the game, but getting to the 16-bit, 8-bit Metroidvania portion of the game and just hearing all of the music come back in different ways and figuring out the puzzles and getting to the point where you're like moving across seven screens in a row and never touching the ground because you're grappling and flying and bouncing off bullets and fireballs and you're climbing up walls and doing backflips and all kinds of freaking cool ninja stuff. And, you know, we've talked about the game ad nauseum, but... I need to go on the record and say, I apologize. I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I had the wrong impression about this game and it's incredible. And uh, honestly, if I, if I hadn't stumbled upon the next game that I'm going to talk about, I would have continued playing it to completion. Do you think that they front loaded it the way they did just to make it? So when you do have that revelation, it's just like, Bam. It's just like, man, this has to be game of the year. Like it gives more of a lasting impact or maybe the I will tell you that the punch that the game delivers, especially for the art style and the way the game presents itself as, you know, not a modern game. It the punch that it delivered in terms of what was happening, how it was delivered and the actual story content was like it brought me back to Bioshock and Bioshock Infinite oh, and dang. watching the Matrix for the first time. You're bringing time. out the heavy and, hitters. You know, hmm. like, I mean, it really, it truly was like one of the coolest things that I've seen in games in terms of just like my mind just like reeling, pausing the game, being like, all right, hold on a second. And like immediately wanting to, s- I almost stopped everything and went back to the beginning and just started over that whole first two and a half hours. Like as soon as I got into the flow of it, the first thing that I wanted to do was go back and re-experience it all from the beginning. Wow. And I'm glad I didn't because I still want to go back to it. But, you know, I've, pl- I played Owlboy earlier this year and Dead Cells came out this year. Technically, both of those games aren't necessarily 2018 releases. Um, Celeste is, but I mean, I will say that the messenger is like right shoulder and shoulder with all of those. And I just, and the fact that I have one eightied on that game soundtrack so hard. I mean, I just like Hyperlight. I've gone to that game and just played it on an airplane last week because I was in the mood to listen to that soundtrack. (laughs) I mean, I have completely one eighty on that. game, So I, I will, uh, I will finish it and, uh, I will certainly, uh, report back once I do. There's probably not too much more to, to say about it. You know, I, uh, right now I'm kind of 
it, it opens up like seven or eight different types of unlockables. So there's a million reasons to go back and find hidden paths and exits and all the levels and all that kind of stuff. So I'm just working my way through that right now. It's kind of like each time it's like, okay, I got to go from here to here. And I know there's these collectibles on the way and you got to get this item to go deliver to this thing. And I mean, it, it's a legit Metroidvania and, uh, but it's just plays like Ninja Gaiden. Yeah. I think it really, says a lot that it just bam hits you all of a sudden and i think maybe a lot of other people are having that because i always came in to the with the assumption that you just switch between the two 8-bit and 16-bit right away and that sounded cool but actually the way you're describing it makes it sound like they actually thought things out more effectively maybe and that's why it's getting such high reviews i mean it definitely is there is absolutely one impression I can hear from people that is different than people who have played through the game and finished it. I mean, I heard so, so, so many reviews that were like, this is one of the best games of the year. And I was like, what game are you playing? <laughs> and the answer is not the first two and a half hours of the game. That's, like, that's the answer. Hmm. Um, and it does make sense why they started out like they did. Okay. But to say more would spoil it. Okay. Um, just just have to buy and, it. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I, I I really do think. Uh, yeah, I think I think it's a must play for every Switch owner, and it beats you hard. It's not as hard once you beat those first two and a half hours. Last bosses or so might get tough, but by time you're Metroidvania in through it, you know enough of the mechanics and and locomotion and stuff to kind of navigate your way through tougher battles and such. So hmm. anyways, uh, that's the messenger. Now whew, <laughs> I stopped playing the messenger that Saturday night because I wanted to try something new and I was browsing around looking at some different top 10 videos and things like that. And I found, um, I don't even remember. I think the channel was the metal Jesus rocks channel. You ever yeah, watch that guy? That guy's, that guy's awesome. He has yeah, such a I, great I really collection. Like <laughs> he's like it's such a great collection, such a nice guy. I know he's like uh, this metal guy, but he's just has hi, how are you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like, yeah, he's so awesome. innocent. Uh, yeah, and uh, you know his stories, and he's got a he's got a cool like naivete about a lot of games. Right. Um, yeah, he's not he's, he's not embarrassed to say yeah. that. Yeah, very much, and we need that more in gaming. Yep, and. Uh, he loves top-down shooters. Think like 1942 Raiden, or is it 1945? It's 45. I forget. But, <laughs> 1942 know, is a first-person you, shooter. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's Battlefield. You know, 1944, 1945. <laughs> World War II. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that one. Um and uh, or like ride in or any of those games where you're looking down at the screen, you see your ship down at the bottom, things coming at you from the top and you're, you're blasting stuff, getting power ups to make your they're almost bullet hell, but they're not yeah. bullet hell. Like it's the area right before they get to that point. Yeah. And number nine on his list of the top ten, so like not even anywhere near the top, was this beautiful looking game called Sky Force Reloaded. Sky you Force. Heard of this? I've heard of it, but I have not. Okay. Seen much of it. Yeah. First of all, <laughs> let me tell you what. <laughs> in like ten days, I've put like thirty freaking hours into this game. <laughs> and you said it you said it's a top down shooter. Yeah. How do and you put like thirty hours into a top down shooter? Four minutes at a time. <laughs> it has roguelike elements <laughs> and RPG mechanics. <laughs> Sky Force reloaded. Okay. I'm a- <laughs> and it's ten bucks. It started as a mobile game like one of the first iphone games came out in like 2006 or 7 i think right and yeah. and it got a couple of re-releases and then about two or three years ago it got a kind of definitive version of the game called sky force anniversary and that title it was actually playstation plus at the time and so a lot of us probably have the game but sky force reloaded kind of retooled it with more of the RPG elements. And so the game is built with 13 levels, three extra stages at the end, which I haven't unlocked any of those three extra stages yet. And like the first time you play it, you're not going to beat the first level. It's going to take you like five plus runs to beat the first level. I, I took like 40 runs at it before I was at level four or five, 
But every time you're collecting stars and there are a series of like nine different upgradable aspects from your main cannon, your wing cannon, your missiles, your magnet to pick up the collectibles, all that kind of stuff. And each one has like 40 levels of upgrade. And in addition to that, there are ship parts that you can collect and there are power-ups that are permanent or temporary and they're timed and there's a weekend online tournament mode and there's just so many carrots dangling in this game that like I can't stop (laughs) I have a problem with this game (laughs) oh that sounds perfect for me now so and like I said each each level is four minutes tops yeah. Plus the the main enemy that you battle is. Uh, did you ever play the old Command and Conquer like Red Alert? Oh yeah, games? I was a big fan of those. Yep. Perfect. The main villain is like straight out of the Red Alert games. Like the <laughs> he's like the, the leader Soviet. of Nod. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, and uh, so it's it's got humor. It looks gorgeous. It sounds so cool. Uh, I'm surprised I've never really heard much about it. Right. And it came out like a year ago on the Switch. Yeah, it was 2017 was it was on an Xbox. And then this year it came out this year, February. Oh, 1st. this year, this this January or yeah, yeah, January or February. You're right. So it's fairly recent to the Switch. Right. Um, it uh, my only complaint about the game is that it's not very well optimized for the Switch only in the aspect that it really drains my battery mm. like And I only know that because I've drained my battery on it like 10 (laughs) times. Um, But games, especially when we play so many indie games that are usually a little more generous on on the processor, I noticed that, oh, wow, I'm already below 90% after I've done like three or four runs. So, I mean, I probably only get like an hour and a half of battery if I'm just playing that game. Yeah, this looks like a really cool shmup. I love those types of games. So It is awesome. Glad to hear about it, man. I've, it's, this has been a mystery to me this whole week because you wouldn't share the title. So now, <laughs> now I have it. <laughs> I can experience it myself. So, so gushing about the messenger, gushing about <laughs> Sky Force Reloaded. Uh, go, go get it. I also, I just bought The Legend of Evil by Spring Loaded. It looks like um, you're a bad guy. Graphics are very pixelated. Looks kind of like Owlboy art style. Uh, but it is tower offense. So you're like the bad guy tower going offense. after the people <laughs> playing tower defense. That's clever. I don't, it looks pretty fun. It's a brand new game. So I will try that and uh, report back on it next week. Awesome. Is that it? Phew. Man, I think that's you're it. beating me two weeks in a row. You've beaten me with games to play, man. Well, I've been traveling a lot. So, you know, when travel have switch, we'll travel. That's true. I'm traveling tomorrow. Unfortunately, tomorrow I've got to be on a plane with someone I work with, and I'm like, <sighs> "Is it someone you? Li- it must not be someone you care for." <laughs> I know, no, he's a cool dude, but he's kind of like a work dad almost. Oh. <laughs> like, and, and we're in our flights at like eleven in the morning, and it's like, Ugh. Oh. is he going to pull his laptop out and start working on the plane? Because I can't play my Switch if he's going to do that. <laughs> Say, so we'll, I don't we'll care. see. Because <laughs> I'm an adult. Yeah, <laughs> priorities. <laughs> We, we had a couple of games announced for the Switch, a couple of Nindies just today. Um, Want to hit on a couple of those? We got some good Yeah, ones. actually, I brought this to your attention because I know your love for the feline companions that you have. <laughs> Cat Tales. Yes. Cat Woo! Tales. Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> Comes out on November 29th. And if you watch any YouTube trailers for it. It looks like the cutest, like uh, Stardew Valley type of game, but you're a cat. Like you do everything a cat would do and you have to like hunt. You have to pray for your food. Yeah. You, ha- you take on other cats for your territory. Um, it looks just like that. It's just like they ha- label that as like a real life RPG <laughs> of being a cat. So <laughs> that looks pretty cool. It does look like fun. And then we got a good one announced yesterday. Yeah. Rogue Legacy. And this is coming. They haven't revealed a official release day, but it's coming out in November. And yeah, we've gushed about this before, but this is one that's well worth your time and definitely will be a blast to play on the switch. 
because because I don't think it ever came out for Vita. So it's never been in that portable form. Yeah, it's on the Vita. Oh, it is. It's on the Vita. It is. OK, uh-huh. well, switch looks better anyway. So we're happy to see it there. Yeah, it does so, that nice big screen. It, it was a little small on Vita. Yeah. Everything, sure. when you go back to the Vita, it's like everything is just so much smaller. It's like, <laughs> like they have Darkest Dungeon for Vita, and mm-hmm. I can't do it. It's just too small. Well, and you only have the L and R button, so you're stuck dealing with the weird touch. Yeah, the back te- touch. Oh, that was buttons. such a stupid decision <laughs> by Sony. Sure was. Uh, but yeah, the, go get Rogue Legacy when it comes out in November, and you'll be impressed. Like, the premise is awesome. What do you think that's going to be? I hope it's like, uh, ten dollar maybe fifteen dollars at the most i mean that seems I think i'd pay 15 i would pay 15 for it if i've never played it before i might well i might just buy it again because i want it so much but yeah in the in the game you take part as these this knights through this lineage and as you you will die as you play it then you take over as another knight and each time you're you have some type of abnormality that com- becomes upon you so Say you might be nearsighted, so you can't see. Is that when you can't see things close to you or far from you? Yeah, isn't it like it, you can't see the opposite of whatever the term is? So Maybe nearsighted so. means you, so can't you can't see near. Right, so it's all blurry up front, but then it's clear on the, in, in the background. Or maybe you have co- your color blind, so everything's black and white. Mm-hmm. So. It, it has it's really like some of them cool are things. really hindrances to the gameplay and some of them are just funny. Yeah, I forget there's one that's like really bizarre where you're like walking upside down. <laughs> well, and there's one where they just constantly swear, but it's like comic like speech bubbles that pop up. Oh, yeah, and, the like, enemies they, you know, like, do that. Q- and stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's clever. So that's coming out soon. So I was happy to hear about that. Yep. Awesome game. And we'll guess, I guess we'll go right into the new releases. 1023, which is Tuesday. We have Windjammers. You're a big fan of this one. Aren't yeah, you? this is a very fun, like Neo Geo, like sort of sports title where you have you're trying to defend a goal and you have Frisbees. And each character you have has super powers, special powers that they can use. And there's a lot of power ups and just all out chaos. But it's a lot of fun. So that's I highly recommend that for every anyone. And then next we have Pizza Titan Ultra from Breakfall Studios. And I'm not sure what that is, but it looks cool. It's um, it's like a like a mech combat game, like a top down mech like what's the what are those old games like virtual on well that's more of a fighting game oh, it yeah? looks cool we we should totally keep our eye out on it okay yeah certainly next on 1025 which is a thursday we have pinstripes from serenity forge and that's actually one that i played already and it's another dark title but it has a light-hearted tone to it i really enjoy that um we have seven billion humans from tomorrow corporation and there's a, there. Is, let me just say there are a ton of games coming out. So I'm just going to list through these. And if you know of any or if I do, we can hit on them. But I'm just going to read them. Read the list. We have we have word puzzles from Palgi or Palgai. We have Aqua TV from EM Studios. Hey, let's stop on this. OK. One. All right. EM Studios. Stop it. <laughs> stop it. EM Studios. Do you know what this is? I have it's no freaking screensaver. It's a screensaver. No, it's not. Yes, it's a. $10 oh, it's, a, it's like a screensaver. Fish tank. Yeah. <laughs> EM Studios, stop it. You've been warned. I like your little continue. ten effing dollars. <laughs> They're charging ten dollars <laughs> for it. Wow. Okay, black and white Bushido from Good Catch Games, and this is one I played on the PS4 and Eli and I had a lot of fun with it where your ninjas, you're either black or white and you blend into your color and you can change as you go through the stages, the shadows fall in different places and that's how you stay in the stealth and then you can come out and try to kill them. Uh, that's cool. Yeah, it's, that's it's fun. a fun, you know, just pick up and play type of game. Next, we have 100 Ultimate Mahjong. And we don't know who made that game. 
super hyperactive ninja from Jandusoft, and that sounds really cool. I'll probably check that out. Um, Puzzle Wall from Rainy Frog. Strike a pose and tilt yourself to the wall. Okay, so it's like um, that game in virtual reality where you make the shape and you go through a wall pretty much. Yeah, it, that, but like not good. It looks like to me. It doesn't look very good. Okay. It only works in virtual reality. Eternum EX from Zereno Games. This one looks really cool. Like it says, Sir Arthur has gotten old. It's like a knight as an old man, but the gameplay looks. I don't. I don't know what to say. What this is, man. It's like a, <laughs> it's like a 2D 2D action platformer. It look. It looks really cool. Okay. I'm very interested in. That's this. another one yeah. I'll highlight. Um, we have Heavy Burger coming out, then Dracula's Legacy, and our our chicken game of the week is Chicken Range. So there you go. I guess you shoot chickens, maybe. Why? Why do we I know. always have chicken games? <laughs> They're just. Should we do? <laughs> should we do a list of the top ten chicken games on the Switch? The top chicken game. 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 On the switch. There we go. Good lord, this game looks awful. <laughs> then we have Pianista, the legendary virtuoso. Next, we have Fairy Tale Puzzles. Then we have Luke and Rebecca from Rockshin Studios. Next, we have Car Quest from E Zone. And I'm interested in that one. Yeah, it looks L- like you said, it looks kind of boring. But yeah, yeah, the open world car game. It's like a 3D platformer. It looks like it's built in like an 80s version of the PlayStation. Yeah, for maybe for dr- driver fans might appreciate that. Good call. And Storm in a Teacup from Riggins Star Games. And this you put this looks like Meat Boy. So um, yep. I guess you die a lot, but. That's how you learn. And then finally, <laughs> for the 25th, we have Suicide Guy. And this looks it looks actually looks pretty fun where you actually kill yourself to solve puzzles. What is it with you in these suicide games? I know <laughs> it's it's very <laughs> disturbing. <laughs> 1026, we have 911 Operator and then Halloween Pinball. So there's your pinball fix for the week right there. Timely. Yep. And then 1029, we have Sky Sky Scrappers, but we could call it Sky Crappers if you want to. Just because I mistyped it in the (laughs) Google Doc. (laughs) What is this next one? You said this one is interesting. All right. 1030, we have Save Me Mr. Taco. (laughs) (laughs) This is from Nicalis. And they're 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 oh, okay. they're you know they're a well known indie studio of sorts, and it's actually it's cool because it takes the concept of playing on your Game Boy on the Switch, and it's actually based off a squid, and you you play in underwater levels, and I can't really delve too much into it but i will have further impressions next week oh yeah it says that right on the page it's designed as a tribute to the game boy looks sounds and plays like a long lost cartridge for that beloved handheld game you know? system huh yeah yeah it's 50 different hats sounds like uh, kirby in a way yes interesting yes and then finally we have gal metal on the 30th so you can get your rock on right there Oh, and your Yomawari collection also comes out on the 30th. Yeah. Oh, snap. On November 1st, we've got Transistor. Oh, man. It's oh, it's time. It's time. We had Bastion. Now we're getting Transistor. Oh, and Rogue Legacy is showing up on the new release list for November 6th. Oh, it has 6th. a date? Okay. That's soon. Yeah. Wow. Oh, that's yeah, great. Yeah, because when they announced it, they didn't have a date. No. Okay, well. There you go. So we have some good things to look forward to come November.
and you think that you found some good deals on the Switch. I'm not going to lie. I haven't been seeing that much on sale that I've been interested in. It's hard. There's, there's so many there's so many games on sale, it's hard to sift through. But there are a few diamonds in the rough, if you will. Ukulele is 25% off, and it's $29.99 now. So Have you played that? No, I haven't. Um, I've been intrigued, too. But it's a game I'm going to probably get when it's closer to $20. Cheaper. Yeah. Jackbox Party Pack 5, which just came out. It's not a big discount, but it's 17% off for $24.89. And if you need another good party game on the Switch, um, it can come highly recommended. Um, Save Me Mr. Ta- Save Me Save Me Mr. Taco. Blah, blah. Is as on a pre-order discount, which I can't see since I own the game currently. It is. Oh, it's a third off. Okay. It's only 10 bucks if you pre-purchase. That's probably one of the biggest uh, pre-purchase discounts I've seen. Yeah. Hmm. And like I said, I'm enjoying it right now, so I can definitely recommend it. Um, Layers of Fear is 30% off for $13.99, and this is sort of a walking simulator horror experience, but I enjoyed it on yeah, the PS4. Yeah, wasn't this a big VR game? It was never a VR game. It was never on the mind. PS4, though, but it tells a pretty not good story about an artist that sort of loses his mind and his pictures that he sees different things in them. And I, I really mm-hmm. liked it when I played it on the PS4. So that'd be cool on the Switch. Perception is 60% off for $7.99. And this is another one with an interesting concept of... So you're blind, but you can actually see, you can sort of sonar indicate where footsteps and sounds are coming from, and that's how you navigate the environments. So I never played it, but I've heard good things about it. Hyper Sentinel is 80% off, and this is probably a game that you should pick up if you're going to pick up any of these for $2.59. So it's definitely worth it for that price. From what I can tell... I haven't played it yet, but it looks sort of like um, a retro um, Rezo gun. And that was one of the best games on the PS4 for shooter fans. Um, so I'm definitely intrigued by that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it totally does. You can like sh- shift directions. Right. And you got. I wonder if you have to save the last humans. Oh, oh. Uh, bullet point for the back of the Skyforce reloaded box. You do have to save the last humans oh. throughout that game. Save yep. your Every humans, level. folks. Yep. Save your humans. Yep. And when you save them, there's like 10 to 13 in each level, and they always go, Wahoo! <laughs> I thought you were going to go, Wah! Wah! Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's what I thought you were going to do for <laughs> Nope. But you know, you know that's going to get edited in now. <laughs> oh, boy. Great. Okay. And we have the gardens between which I can't see the price because I own it, but there's a discount yeah, it's for that. $15.99, 20% okay. off. That, it was a unique experience. I wouldn't say it's uh, as hyped as it was. It wasn't as good as I thought it would be, but for a different type of time-shifting puzzler, it's pretty good. And then Outlast is 50% off for twelve forty nine, and this is another... Oh, this is was voted like one of the Run scariest the games monsters. ever created because you have you can only see in the dark with this camera that you have. And so, yeah, they have the night vision on with these weird things crawling out. You're in an insane asylum and I have I own it for the PS4, but I haven't played it really yet. I've gotten like <laughs> just to the part where you get inside and I was too freaked out to play it that night. So I stopped. <laughs> oh, man, if it was too scary for you, I'd be peeing my pants. Yeah. So I, yeah, I played Resident Evil seven the whole way through in VR. So did you really? Yeah. It was one of the best experiences wow. I've ever had, but VR is another topic for another day. But, um, yeah, I, I, yeah. I watched, I've only seen like 10 minutes of that game, but one scene that I watched was like the battle in the garage where the dudes drive in the car. Mm, I love that. I love the boss battles in that game. Just because that was intense. So many different things can happen during that boss battle that you wouldn't think about until you play again after you die, most likely, and then you do something different and it changes the whole Mm. mechanics. But yeah, that's it. 
don't they have on the switch a way that you can stream resident evil 7 or was yeah, that another it, game in japan it's on that list with like assassin's creed odyssey and resident evil 7 are the two that are in japan only i wonder uh, how that works on the switch huh. i wonder how good it is i mean that's that that's not like a twitchy game right i mean i have to imagine it's no. a fairly slow paced game right yeah it's slow paced i mean there's times where the enemies <laughs> get right up in your face but sure sure <laughs> Um, I want to touch on a couple that, as you were talking, I, I pulled up and saw. I don't know what the sale price is, but Shantae Half Genie Hero is on sale right now. Yeah. It's at the bottom of the first page, but I can't see the price. I don't have that's my Switch my with favorite. me. <laughs> oh, that's one of my favorite Nindies. Uh, just absolutely awesome game. Um, I also see that Next Up Hero is half off. It's only 10 bucks. I might pick that one up. I, I um, just a uh, quick, I wasn't a big fan of it, but maybe you would enjoy it more than I would. So no, no, it okay, was just well. sort of generic, you know, it, it, the online component was definitely less that way. Yeah. I mean, it was okay. Oh, but. and I, and I wouldn't be play in any online thing probably. So if that's a big sticking point to it, then I probably wouldn't right. play much of it. Right. Um, and then I also saw, did you ever play the mummy demastered? Yeah, that's a great game. Yeah, it's another way for game. Same it's a surprisingly good, <laughs> like it's better, way better than what the movie was. So, yeah, that's what I've heard. It's like nothing to do with the movie, and it's basically like a Super Metroid clone, right? Yeah, pretty much. It looks like all of WayForward's games are on some sort of sale right now, but the Mummy Demastered is fourteen dollars. So, I mean, like fourteen bucks for a quality Metroidvania game that you know isn't necessarily it's not really retro looking because it it's you know it looks more like the rest of way forward's games other than half genie hero which yeah. is like saturday morning cartoon <laughs> pretty much but uh yeah i think that's i think that's most of it uh so what are you most excited about and what do you think you're gonna be picking up like I said, you, I am intrigued about that Eternum EX that you highlighted. And mm-hmm. I would say since I played Pinstripe, that's another one that was a pretty big surprise in how much I enjoy the platforming and just the overall tone of it. So that's what I can recommend. I'm really thinking about getting that stupid screensaver. There you go. Or you can, can you imagine if you were sitting next to someone on an airplane and they were just like holding a switch, staring at, a staring at an saver. aquarium screensaver? <laughs> Ooh, pretty. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I already got the Legend of Evil, so I'm looking forward to giving that a shot. And I might check out the Mummy Demastered, although I think I have enough Super Metroidvania clones in my, yeah. well... Yeah, like you said, as far as sales go, I would, I probably, I'll probably pick up Hyper Sentinel, and then you've sold me on the whole <laughs> Sky Force Reloaded. So I think I might pick you know, that pick up, up too. Sky Force Reloaded. I yeah. think everybody should pick up Sky Force Reloaded. <laughs> oh, it's so fun. you did your job. I have been. I have been pushing off so many games playing that bad boy. I love it. <laughs> um, it's probably like. You know, when we started the podcast, I had a list of games that I knew I needed to get to, like Owlboy. Um, I think Skyforce Reloaded is probably my favorite game that I kind of just stumbled upon. You know, Metal Jesus Rocks was the one that showed it to me, but I wasn't. it wasn't a new video or anything. I was just stumbling through his channel and I happened <laughs> to see it. So Shout out to Metal Jesus Rocks. You will be Shout out you will to be Metal Jesus commended <laughs> on our episode. Yeah, he's got some he's got some awesome, awesome videos. He does. Um All right. Well, we would love to hear what kind of games you are playing and uh if you're playing Skyforce Reloaded, because you should, and uh what you're looking forward to coming up soon. You can let us know on Facebook. You can find us at Nindy Nation. You can find us on YouTube at Nindy Nation. You can also find us on Twitter. I'm at Nindy Jeff. Josh is at minus the Brandt, and we are at Nindy Nation. And uh, stay tuned. We're still working through some extra life um, 
uh, plans. It probably gonna we're starting to think maybe the week before Thanksgiving, most likely on a weekend. But our goal is to do some kind of thing together focused on Nindy Nation. I am actually going to be playing on behalf of another team as well, but we are going to be using the time to uh, play Nindies and promote Nindy Nation. Um, so a little bit of a little bit of a, a, a dual purpose uh, stream, but should be good times had by all. If you're looking for other good gaming content, we are hosted by the Nintendo Village. Josh, tell them about that. Yes, the Nintendo Village is a great site that you can find our show on and many other great shows. And they feature reviews, previews, and feature articles. Also have a YouTube page, which has some good content on there. Uh, um, You can watch um, Phil Myth's show, which he spotlights things going on on the switch network and other things like that so definitely go over there and give those guys some love absolutely and until next week thanks for joining us this week to diving into this week's nindy releases that's josh i'm jeff and don't forget to get your joy cons spayed and neutered